Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to another episode of the Mo Show podcast. Tonight we have a guest from a land far, far away, Mr. Dale Shannon. He is from Aroostook County in Maine, which is in northeastern USA. For those of you who are not so good with geography, he's been in Saudi for over six years. He's an avid off-roader. I caught one of his videos on Instagram and then on YouTube, and I reached out to Dale, and I'm like, I got to get you on the show, and here we are 48 hours later, and he's in the episode. Mr. Dale. Yes. Thank you for coming into the studios. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. <laughs> How are you, man? How you been? Good, good. Been doing good. Yeah. So have you always been an off-roader, even dating back to your days back home in the States? Were you an off-roader or something you picked up in Saudi? Uh, not really. More of a uh, outdoorsman, I would say. But not too much into like off-roading or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, but lately, just kind of got into it and fell in love with it. And so just went with it. <laughs> you know, it's uh, what, what really grabbed my attention is uh, you might be the first American I see on YouTube just, you know, bashing dunes in Saudi, you know, going down south or the mountains of Tabuk. I, I mean, I come across these videos and it's typically, you know, the, the locals of right. that area. Right, right. And here you are. I mean, for a second, I'm like, wait, is that is that not Arizona? You know, <laughs> is, is that Saudi? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you, I think you bring some unique material to YouTube. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, it's, it's really uh, special to be here and to be able to explore these different terrains. Um, I'm from the woods, so there's no desert. It's all trees, and six months out of the year, it's all snow. Yeah. So once I figured out the desert and I got myself a decent vehicle to go off-road in, it just became addicting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, there's there's no doubt about that. I did a couple of years in the Northeast in New Hampshire, and the winters there are brutal. Oh, yeah. I mean, I... I don't know how I put up with it at the time, but right. now, you know, living in warmer climate, I think you'll have an adjustment going back, moving, moving back yeah, home yeah. after the six Definitely. years that you put in here. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, so your love for off-roading kind of kind of kicked off when you when you moved here uh, to Saudi. Yeah, yeah. So uh, like you mentioned, I've been here a little over six years. Mm -hmm. And I would say for the first four years, I didn't do anything outdoors. Mm -hmm. Just kind of uh, did the normal expat routine went to work went home went to work went home did some grocery shopping or went to a mall on the weekends and that was it i didn't know like anything about going in the desert i didn't know if it was allowed you know so you got to remember this is six years ago so a lot's changed here since then yeah truly and uh yeah so i think it was 2020 february 2020 we did a trip to El Ula. And I said, oh, we'll go here El Ula all the time. Let's check it out. And so we went, we checked it out, and we had a good experience, and we wanted to do more, and we haven't stopped since. Mm -hmm. It's um it even that town, I mean, has has come a long way in the past couple of years. I went last week and I'm going again in a week. There's something about the air in Al Ula that just really makes it feel like a special place. I love the sand there. It's that super soft sand that yeah. you feel that with any decent driving ability, you shouldn't get into too much trouble. Right. You drive uh, a Nissan Patrol that's very popular in the U in the UAE, Saudi now as well. Right. I think I think the UAE rubbed off on us. Yeah. And that, I mean that car, I, I it isn't available in the US. Right. Or in Europe, it's it's mainly a Middle Eastern edition car. Yes. How does that handle on your treks on in the off-road? Yeah, I mean the the Patrol Super Safari is is the reason that we can go to the places that we go to. It goes anywhere, huh? It goes anywhere. Mm -hmm. So um I did a lot of research before getting it. Actually I was I was debating between a gladiator, Jeep Gladiator, and uh, came down to the Super Safari. Yeah. And in the end, the Gladiator costs w w a lot more. And when you get it, you have to modify it. Yeah. The Super Safari is ready to go off-road from the dealer. Ready to go. So, I've been seeing the, this, the Gladiator uh, all over town. It's really spread like wildfire. Yeah. Uh, definitely Jeep's response to the Raptor, the Tundra. Yeah. 
uh, yeah. and Dodge's recent uh, T-Rex, I think it's yeah. called. Yeah. Wow. Um, when did you decide to want to go public and, and start a YouTube account and really, you know, appear? Yeah. So I'm here with my family. My wife's here. My son's here. And uh, like I said, we started in El Ula. We did a trip. And then uh, after that, then uh, COVID hit. And so we said, okay, let's get all the gear we need together while we can right now. And then when we can go out again, we're just going to keep doing trips like this. And so we got all the gear. We collected. We had so much gear you wouldn't believe. I had the, the tent that you could live in for a month in the in the middle of the desert. And uh, so when they uh, released the lockdowns, you know, the whole world was doing them, we went out and started camping and we just kept on kept on going from there. How difficult of an adjustment was it for you to be able to live in the wild? Did you come with some experience from the woods of Maine? Did you used to camp over there? Because it's not easy and it's not it's not very forgiving. Right. Uh, yeah. So f I grew up camping, but my wife's from the city. Okay. So she's from Manila. Okay. Yeah. So it's an adjustment. Yeah. She'd never gone camping, so I had to uh, you know baby her. You know, she first she was scared of like. Oh, I don't want to go where there's no internet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> so we st we started camping maybe like 200 meters from like a main road. Okay. You know, you'd find a rock or something and uh, we'd just start there. Is the coverage for internet available once you're in the, you know, in, in off-road areas? So we go to some really, really remote areas. Uh, so... Usually there's no internet, but if you climb a tall enough hill or a mountain in the area, you can get some 3G. Uh, what about being just out, uh, you know, in the middle of nowhere? What's the culture like, the people that you've met? Uh, good experiences, bad experiences? Like, How do you reflect on the people that you've rubbed shoulders with out there? Yeah, so the people that we meet, even deep out in the remote, the Bedouins out in the desert... Uh, are all like very hospitable. I always joke with people. The, the one thing that we're scared of when we go to remote places is that the Bedouins are going to find us and ask us to drink camel milk. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had the pleasure? Yeah, it wasn't that bad, but it, I think it was pasteurized. Okay. Yeah. But not something you'd put on your coffee in the morning. No. Okay. Not me. Just anyway. one, one and yeah, done. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the people are great. The people are really hospitable. Mm -hmm. um, we've people offer us, hey, you can come stay here in my place. Yeah. Like we knew each other for two minutes. You know, <laughs> what do you want from me? Yeah, yeah. And uh, if you're not used to it, like if you're just here for like a tourist and you're only here for a couple of days or something like that, and especially if you're from like states, you will. You always think like somebody's asking you something or giving you something because they want something in return or maybe there's some type of danger. And that's how we're brought up to think. Yeah. And so, but I've been here for over six years. And so it's just the nature of the people here to want to help you, to be generous, to be hospitable. And uh, yeah, so it's one of the reasons that we enjoy being here mm -hmm. yeah that's amazing yeah it's um it's something that i've noticed that the bedouins out outside of the cities are they take hospitality a lot more seriously than uh than those in the city yeah it's it's you know certainly in the dna of, of all of us but uh you know the tribesmen the bedouins they are generous on another level. Yeah. It's kind of like they haven't really forgot their roots. Right. City, you know, you're always, you know, slightly yeah. more modernized. And right. Forget yeah. many of the. But I mean, even uh, we have some some city friends, too. And uh, I mean, they blow me away with their generosity, really. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like, uh, I don't know, like I'm some kind of famous person. But uh, it's just 
people that we're meeting treating us how they how they want yeah. to treat us and uh, what's you know it's like it's like it's in their blood yeah i think it's like how they're raised and it is it's 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 one element that nobody can take away from us yeah hospitality yes yeah. something that we will you know hopefully forever right get right and i think it's a very nice trait to have yeah ikram al def in arabic is is uh, is huge which is you know taking care of your guests yeah making sure that they don't leave your house until they're satisfied and full and fed and drank right. and yeah and uh and and with a with a you know a date to come back <laughs> right right yeah but uh yeah cuz i i mean i didn't know anything about the arab culture at all prior to coming over here mm-hmm. and i just consider myself like the average american guy and so most people i would run into don't have any idea either and so yeah yeah. what were your um impressions or let's say what were your expectations of saudi beforehand compared to having plugged six plus years here now i mean really before i came over here i didn't never thought about saudi you'd see some stuff in the news sometimes um Usually it's not good stuff, but uh, even even uh, prior to coming here, though, I was never big like in believing the news. You know, I usually just call it gossip. Yeah. <laughs> Fear mongering. Yeah, and I, most people that I think most Americans or Westerners you talk to don't know anything about Saudi Arabia, so most don't form an opinion. Your family back home when uh, the first year or so, were they on, on, on edge on how you're getting along? Uh, no, not really, actually. He's a big guy. He can take care of yeah, himself. Yeah, pretty much like that. <laughs> uh, so when I first came over here, uh, most people wouldn't be worried about me. One, because I'm old enough to take care of myself. And two, you know, there's nothing serious going on in the news in the Middle East at the time or anything like that. So there's nobody's really worried you know but uh yeah um talk to me about trails uh you are based in the north in tabuk yeah so we're we're based in tabuk uh we go out every single weekend so i actually have a job Mm -hmm. where i work full-time so weekends are our time to relax and we choose to go out and explore and do some off-roading camping sometimes we go alone Sometimes we go with people, yeah. and I think I've logged probably twenty five hundred kilometers worth of trails into my maps. Um, I use a application that logs all my trails, so you just hit record and you drive and explore and and uh, yeah, about twenty five hundred kilometers wow. of off road trails. Yeah, off road trails, a lot. Yeah. That's that's a lot. That's from like here to the UAE border. Yeah. That's no joke <laughs> of off-road trails. Right. And you've been doing this like for the last five, six years? No. So. Uh, the trailing part. I think the first four years, mm. we didn't do anything. Nothing. Just working home, working home. So February is when you kicked off 2020. That's when you started. Yeah. So February did a tour to El Ula. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. We enjoyed it. The scenery was amazing and we kind of got the itch yeah to do it more yeah and uh we've been doing it ever since pretty much that tour Mm -hmm. every weekend something about getting in you know the element of freedom getting into your car and and driving so i drove to alola last week yeah and i spent two nights there and i drove back it recalibrates you right it's it's the you know, it's the reset button you're looking for if you're in the city for a couple of months. Right. Just you and the open road. Right. You know, you want to stretch your legs. You, you just jump off, get out, fill up gas, go yeah. for a little walk. And, yeah. you know, I, I prefer it to any kind of uh, method of transportation. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I was like, as a joke on, on Instagram, I'm like, long distance driving should be an Olympic event, for goodness <laughs> sake. <laughs> yeah. It's just that element of freedom is, uh, you just can't put a price on it. Uh, you know, we... When we started it, it was more like when we started the YouTube channel, it wasn't f- to like, we want to do YouTube. It was more like just for ourselves yep. to have some kind of edited memory of our trips that we would take camping. Because, you know, people just, 
they take all kinds of footage on their phones and then you just have these collections and hard drives full of pictures and videos and you don't even know you got it. And so we said, well, let's, let's edit it. And so my wife started editing, which she never did before. So she does the editing. I'm just a driver. You actually. drive I'm and a driver. she films. She films. She edits. She d- flies a drone. Uh, what a team. Yeah. And your son is uh, the uh, the audience who gets to see it first. Half. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. That's awesome. So you, you, you minimize on your costs post-production. Yeah. I, I, I have to pay someone for editing and translating every word we say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I do the translation though. And the translation. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So we do all our videos with Arabic subtitles. Okay. But I mean, it's YouTube helps. Yeah, yeah. With that, with the yeah, making it. Uh, but you got to make sure your English is on point first. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, who knows what it translates to? Because it's, it's fun <laughs> doing this. Using that creative part of your brain, doesn't it excite you? You know, the day after you upload and you see, you wake up the next day, you want to see the performance of the video, the analytics. Yeah, yeah. It opens you to a whole new sphere of something you probably knew nothing about. Yeah, I knew nothing about. Yeah. Either. And uh, sometimes I'm surprised and then sometimes I'm shocked. <laughs> like, we'll put out a video and we're like, this video's the best video in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, n- there's no video that compares to this. And I'll look and I'm like, that's only got a couple of views. <laughs> <laughs> yes. YouTube can be a cruel place sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, what I love about the part of Saudi that you live in is that you guys have seasons. I mean, Jebel al turns white once or twice. A year. I mean, it did yeah. this year, and yep. it's probably going to go white for, a, for for one more time in a few days. Yeah. Um. I, I'm sorry. I'm a bit like dorky when it comes to this. I follow some meteorologists right. in Saudi, and I saw some tweets earlier today uh-huh. that was one more, one more roll of the <laughs> dice, one more hoorah, if you will. So you have a chance. <laughs> there is a chance. There is a chance. Um. And uh, I mean, do you, do you do you look forward to that? Do you take advantage of it? Like, come November, December, you're like, all right, guys, you know, this is it's gonna it's gonna snow soon, and you know, it brings a whole new dynamic to your adventures. Yeah. I mean. Uh, you spend a good six months in in the heat in the summer, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's really nice to be able to know some cold weather is coming. It's not just going to stay hot the whole time, and you can do some different places that you normally wouldn't go to, and yeah, you can maybe catch the snow. Mm-hmm. So build a snowman. Yeah. It's a really cool picture that I saw yeah. you and the family. Uh, we'll actually put it up right now, the picture of the snowman that you built, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, is this, I mean, because for me, Saudi is Jeddah, where we don't see a day under 18 degrees. Right. Uh, so just to see a snowman, I had to pinch myself yeah. to realize that, wow, this yeah. is... Well, it's a snow baby. Oh. I'll take it. <laughs> Our little desert snow baby. Yeah. I mean, it's better than anything we got in yeah. Jeddah. Uh, so you've been in Saudi for the last six years. You... Uh, you know, you, you witness change. There's a lot yeah. that's happened. Yeah. How, what's your interpretation on what we have seen change in the last five years? Yeah, so when I first came, um, it was still really, really uh, like ultra conservative. And even the expats talk to each other. They would say like, don't do this. Don't do that. You're going to be in trouble. Don't uh, do all this stuff. And so people were scared to like just live their life. You know, and then as time went on, they had some uh, leadership changes and uh, things started to change and it became more open. And then you were into book. So we'd hear like, yeah, did you know in Jeddah you can wear your abaya open now? You know, and uh, little things like that you'd start to hear. Movie then, theaters. Yeah, movie theaters are coming. And I remember one morning I was getting ready for work and I saw on the news I think I was, I was like CNN or something. And they said, women can drive in Saudi Arabia. I forget what year it was. 17, I think. Yeah, it was actually, it was actually 18. 18, yeah, okay. Yeah, so July or June 18. Yeah, but yeah. I remember it was on the news and I was like, what? And I told my wife and she was like, what? And we we're like, wow. <laughs> Things are really changing. Yeah. 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 And so, um, and then from there, it just became more... More of a casual, normal feeling environment. Yeah. You know, like you want to just go to the store like you normally would, or I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it was like the stresses that you would feel prior to it becoming more open uh, weren't there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, did you guys feel it in Tabuk as well? Did you feel that shift in up up north? I think it's a little slower than what you would get in the city. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, you you can see changes. And another thing is like like buildings. There's like I drive to work right, and there's like this area that's just all dirt. I drove by like a month later and it's like, there's going to be a mall there. And there's like all these buildings. I'm like, what in the world? Yeah, and yeah, it's just yeah. like cities and towns are just popping up. Big and, economic impact. Yeah. The, 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 the new or deregulation of like, you know, c- cinemas or just events that are pouring into Saudi has had a socioeconomic impact. Yeah. Which is really good to see. Did you did you manage to go to Riyadh season? No, we we didn't make it there. That's yeah. something for you. You take your something for you to take yourself yeah. to. Um, it's a little Disneyland pop yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, something to I see. I hear it's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's on for another few months, and uh, I want to catch it too because um, some of my friends work on the project, and they're like, it's double the size of two years ago, right. and it's just not to be missed. There's actually a cool zone. Uh, called combat zone where you're kind of in tanks right and you're playing a game against another team in full combat uh-huh. gear, and that's like one of 20 zones right so it's something uh, it's something to see i feel yeah um how much longer do you see yourself in you look like you're having a great time here um, yeah i don't know if you think about home a lot but how many years do you see yourself putting into saudi well i mean i always joke with my colleagues when they ask me that same question how long are you going to stay here i say so you guys make me leave. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we get, we have no plans to leave anytime soon. Mm-hmm. We like it here. We all our friends are here. Um, we just we really like it here, and we got no plans to uh, head out anytime soon. So we're just gonna keep on doing what we've been doing and enjoying ourselves. Nice. So hop over any borders to any Arab neighboring Arab countries: Jordan, Iraq. No, Dubai. It'd be nice to do some overlanding uh, yeah. stuff that we do here uh, in some other countries like Jordan or Oman or even UAE. Yeah, Oman is beautiful. Right? But I mean, finding the time is difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, we got to bring uh, our son overseas so we can see his uh, grandparents and things like that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, last couple of years, we spent most of our vacations and holidays here in saudi in saudi yeah if you do decide to do oman there's a new road that opened like a month ago and right. it's the longest straight in the world it's like a drag racer's dream uh-huh. that kind of goes <laughs> from Riyadh, and it shaves like 300 kilometers from the old road and it's a straight shot through the empty quarter uh-huh. to the oman border that's nice so something to remember yeah uh next time uh, you go but i think you might yeah. need like a, a lamborghini to yeah. <laughs> see how fast it can go <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool, Dale, man. Like you've been up to some really cool things. Um, nothing like the outdoors, you know, the yeah. fresh air, the adventure lifestyle. Besides just like the camping, the outdoor stuff we do, we also like history, which I didn't know I liked history before until we started going to the desert and finding history. So you find inscriptions. You find we found uh, an old like wheat grinder before. Um, do you look for it do you have like that metal detector no 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 it's a stone so okay uh but you just you can go out in the desert especially in the tabuk area especially in the northwest there's just so much going on Mm -hmm. there was like big trade routes and incense routes and a lot of stuff going on there and uh so much history even one site that i found i registered it with the ministry of culture so wow yeah and you just stumble upon this stuff yeah in your trails yeah so you're just driving along and you're like hey what's that over there on that rock wall wow that's really cool yeah and so you get out and you look at it and you're like oh look you can see like different writings and so we started studying different uh, like thamudian mm-hmm. thamudian writings and uh, nabataean writings and figuring out what they are and then uh like most of my twitter is uh about history okay yeah. Because ancient civilizations, you know, occupied that part of the world back right. in the day. Right. You know, we're not far from the Ottomans. Um, okay, maybe Egypt and, and right. what happened. Yeah. I mean, a lot of 
it, it was a, a popular ground for the ancient civilization. Right. Something yeah. I know nothing about. Right. But I'm I'm gonna stalk your Twitter page yeah. so I can yeah, see yeah. more content. Yeah. So then you would reach the Ministry of Culture and, and say, look what look what I found. Yeah. So I started the uh, Twitter page, and mm. there's like a lot of people with the same interests about history, especially here in yeah. Saudi Arabia, because it's so plentiful. Yeah. Um, and they'd give you pointers. And then one guy said, hey, you should register this with the Ministry of Culture. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, how do I do that? That sounds cool. And then he just, you just do it online like this. I said, well, that's easy. And so I did it. <laughs> Someone comes to your house? No, nobody came. To I went to the guy's office, though. So. Okay. Yeah. And so completed the uh, process and now should be registered in the system under my name that I found it. That's really cool. Yeah. So, it's, you know, it's something cool that you can do. You say, well, I was in Saudi Arabia this yeah. year and I found this and I registered it. And, and I decided to hand it in and not keep it for myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That, I mean, that must be worth something. Like, you know, for it to be up in a museum now, it's, it's you know, it's yeah. something that many people can, can, can see thanks to yeah. you. So Awesome, Dale. Thanks for coming on, man. Um, yeah. Is there uh, anything... Uh, that we missed something you want to put out there before we uh, let you go back onto the trails? Uh, well, no. Uh, I just always tell, you know, people always ask me, like you were talking about, is it safe here? Things like that. We go as a family into the middle of the desert every single weekend. Um, and so if you're worried or curious about safety here, then just watch our videos. And the uh, the culture and the history. So when you take these cool places and you have tourists coming and they get to see the culture, because the culture here and the history is so old. Mm -hmm. If you go to the States, a couple hundred years old. Yeah, it's modern. You know, 400 years old, something like that. Yeah. Um, but here there's really just, you know, a lot of space to be able to share the history and the culture mm -hmm. and a lot of westerners when they come here they like the the culture and the the hospitality here. yeah yeah you know and like a building that has a story right so there is a, a big movement now to refurbish a bunch of palaces that haven't been used in in ages right there's three across Saudi Arabia that as we speak, a company called Boutique, mm -hmm. they're renovating it into boutique hotels. One is in Jeddah, right. called Alhamra Palace. And that's that's a PIF movement. Yeah. So your Westerners are going to want to stay there instead of staying at your Marriott or the Hilton. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, some boutique hotels opening in Al Balad. Right. Did you get a chance to go down to down the there? Souk area? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah, we've been through there before. It's uh, nice to go through there. Yeah. And we filmed our... our uh, our trip a little bit this time, but we did it a little different than uh, what you might see from other people. We didn't go to your typical uh, places. Mm -hmm. We did it more like, like uh, because we came, we visited our friends. We filmed it as a trip like that, like a casual, like we just live here yeah. and we're going to Jeddah just yeah. like anybody else would yeah. kind of thing, yeah. you know. Before I let you go, how in love are you with our goat over rice traditional meal, the Monday? Um, <laughs> is it something? Uh, is it something that you uh, look forward to whenever it's on offer? Yeah, it's uh, it's delicious. Okay. Um, I was I was hoping you were not yeah. going to say that I'm a vegetarian. No, no, I'm not a vegetarian. Uh, actually, now I had one of my buddies take me to his local butcher, and taught me how to buy the sheep and the camel meat. Wow. So yeah, and my wife makes kabsa. So, oh my goodness, yeah, that's the the trifecta right <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> Dale, honestly, it was a pleasure getting to know you. Um, All right, I'm going to put a lot of videos and pictures up uh, on this episode from your Instagram channels and YouTube, okay, just so people can get a vibe of uh, you know the areas that you've been to, that you've explored, yeah. and what it is you actually do. Yeah. Um, and uh, honestly, thanks for coming, taking hey, time. Anytime. Yeah. And uh, I'm actually not a good speaker. Actually, I'm more of like an introvert. I don't think you said um once. Really? Really. Wow. So so you're, you're better than you think you are. Okay. When we first started the YouTube, my wife was like, can I film it? I was like, uh, yeah, what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm going to put it on YouTube. Okay, don't film me though. Dale, you're a good, you're, you're a good, you're, you are a good speaker. Like, well, because when the first episode I saw, I was like this, you know, it was very, 
it was it was catchy right like you you're a good narrator yeah uh so please i mean don't think uh, don't think otherwise keep putting out that good content all right all right because it's uh, it's special you don't get much english content coming out of saudi especially not from the off-roading world right it's yeah. all in arabic right so you you know you bring a unique angle yeah um the way me and a couple other upcoming podcast up and coming podcasts in saudi yeah. do you know you're showing saudi in english so no need for translation right. um yeah. and and i hope the list of english content material just grows coming out of saudi yeah. because um we could use a lot more yeah so uh keep doing what you're doing yeah and uh, we well, are supporting we're one of our goals is to inspire families also yeah to go and enjoy the outdoors mm -hmm. and enjoy the outdoors here in saudi arabia mm -hmm. So if anybody's watching this and they're wondering, like, can I take my wife camping? Because I love camping. You could just watch our videos and maybe get some ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some inspiration. Yeah, we'll put the links to how people can get in touch with you. And um, yeah, she just put a great idea out there. Uh, I mean, there are companies that take people out yeah. into the desert. Um, but I think few and far between. I think that the, it's still an undersaturated industry yeah for sure um, especially for those families who aren't familiar with going off-road right and it can be very unforgiving especially yeah. the sand that we have yeah. um but uh but you know what i think people are gonna want to ask you a lot of questions yeah so just be prepared for being hey. slightly bombarded yeah no problem <laughs> but uh again we, we love sharing uh anything about our experiences here outdoors that's awesome so that's awesome yeah we'll uh we'll make sure we put all your contact details in the description box all right thanks again dale man all right anytime you, man. glad thanks for coming here. on thanks bye